And I remember when I used to work for the IRS, the Internal Revenue Service, a lot of people, they hear that and they're like, either it shuts down a conversation or people start asking you tons and tons of tax questions. So this was years ago that I used to work and the IRS in my background is accounting. And so I was in the large business and international division and that we dealt with taxpayers with at least $10 million of assets or greater. See, these are large Fortune 500 companies that we were dealing with, going in and auditing, uh, reviewing their financial statement, asking questions to those in the leadership, uh, dealing with the accountants uh, that worked in that industry, as well as working in a team. So in that role, I was an advocate for the IRS. Now, not an advocate that's going to court, but an advocate that is pleading my case with the tax court to say, this is what we believe is the right adjustment. And this is why we believe what we believe. So we're pleading our case before someone else. And intercession is advocacy. We're pleading the case of someone else before our heavenly father in the name of Jesus Christ. So we're going to the throne and they're asking the Lord, dear heavenly father, bless my friend who's going through a physical challenge. I ask you, Lord, to heal them by your stripes. They are healed. We thank you, Lord, that they're blessed from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. Every infirmity is broken down. We plead the blood of Jesus over them and they are blessed and whole. Nothing missing, nothing broken everything whole in Jesus name. So we're going to the father to plead their case in advocacy. So according to Miriam Webster, an advocate is someone who defends or maintains a cause or a proposal. So my cause might be whales. I'm defending this cause before a group of environmentalists because I want them to stop polluting the ocean because the whales are dying. So I'm pleading my case, I'm advocating, and I might do that in a court of law. Advocacy is also someone who supports or promotes the interests of a cause or group. Maybe I'm advocating for women's rights. And so I'm pleading my case before the Supreme Court that this company is uh, abusing or they're taking away the rights of women. And so I'm fighting for that case before a judge someone who pleads the cause of another. So that's where we said I'm standing before my heavenly father, I'm pleading the case of my friend who has a physical challenge and affliction, and I'm asking God to heal them. They believe they're standing in agreement, they believe for healing, and so I'm standing in agreement with them, and we are going to see that person healed by faith in Jesus Christ, amen, because he's a healer. Now in the Greek, an advocate, uh, and we're gonna skip through some of this because so I wanna get to the practical, but an advocate is, as we said, an intercessor. It's also someone who's a counselor. Now you might have a child who's gifted in this and they're counseling their friends. They're someone who desires to run into their prayer closet. Mommy, uh, Sophia at school broke her arm. I just wanna pray for her. You already see that bubbling forth that you might have a little intercessor on your hands, someone who desires to pray for others, amen? And a lot of times it starts early. You know, when I was younger, I would be praying, doing my nighttime prayers, and I would be, sometimes it would take me so long, I was like, I think I need to sign you to go to bed, because I was just praying. I'm not bragging on myself, but it was just spending time with the Lord, praying and asking him to bless the whole world. Lord, save the people, because that was my heart. I wanted to save everybody. Uh, and you go and you... Uh, you learn and you grow in prayer and how to pray. You know, when I was in my earlier 20s, I took a really powerful prayer class. At, it's a large church in Chicago. If I said the name, you would know it. And I learned there how to pray. And they would have us, one of our exercises was joining together and praying for someone else, the power of agreement. And ours was to pray. Uh, we asked the person, what would you like me to pray for? And she was believing God for a house. We stood in agreement and believed. And she sure enough got that house, amen? God is good. And with our children, we can ask them, you know, is there something that they desire? We can stand agreeing with them to show them, I'm gonna pray for you and intercede. And they can also ask their friend, oh, is there something I can pray for you? If they feel led to do that, if to, you know, be careful and, and, and you lead them and guide them and, and, and teach them to be led of the Lord. Like, oh, I feel like to ask this person and they can ask them, is there something that I want to pray for? Or something they want um, your, them to pray for, amen? But that they're led of the Lord and asking that, like, mm, I feel, yes, this is, I'll go ahead and ask, amen? And as they're stepping out, there's no harm. They're asking someone else if they can pray for them you know, and they'll learn and they'll grow. We really want to not 
you want to protect your children you want to teach them wisdom but we also don't want to hinder them from learning and going forth and what god is asking us to do because sometimes god is gonna really push your children out there and it can be scary as a parent when you're like oh my gosh what are they doing why are they prophesying what? you know and we have to let the lord use them you're a guide you're watching you're covering your child but allowing them to step out and God has them to do in decent and in order, in decent and in order. But as they're speaking forth and as they're doing things, we don't want to hinder or quench the spirit of God in them because it's easy to do as a parent because we're wanting to protect them. 